Hi everyone, it's Philip here from Vet Education. Thank you so much for joining us today. I thought we'd talk a little bit about the drug tocerinib and its use in dogs and cats. So what exactly is tocerinib? Well, it's an anti-cancer drug that's been developed and is registered for use in dogs, initially for the treatment of mast cell neoplasia. It's what's called an anti-angiogenic drug, that is, it inhibits blood vessel formation, and it's also anti proliferative as well, um, in that it inhibits cell growth and cell division. It belongs to a class of anti-neoplastic drugs that inhibits the receptor sites of the enzyme tyrosine kinase. Now there are actually more than 58 different tyrosine kinase receptors known at present, and when bound, the enzyme tyrosine kinase enhances activities such as cell growth, cell metabolism, and adhesion, among other processes as well. Mutated tyrosine kinase are implicated in unregulated cell growth of tumor cells. And so the thought is by blocking these tyrosine kinase enzyme binding sites with agents such as tocerinib, we can utilize them as effective anti-cancer treatments. So let's talk a little bit about the published evidence behind tocerinib. And firstly, we'll talk about mast cell neoplasia because that's the stated claim for tocerinib. Mast cell uh, neoplasia is a cancer of a type of blood cell normally involved in the body's response to allergens and inflammation. It's a pretty common skin tumor in dog, mast cell neoplasia, but it can also affect other areas of the body as well, including the spleen, the liver, and gastrointestinal tract and bone marrow. Now, mast cell tumors in dogs and some in cats as well can produce or express a tyrosine kinase growth factor receptor called KTS. And a significant number, up to 50% of these patients, can have a mutation in the KIT gene coding for the KIT protein, which results in these mast cell tumors receiving a signal to grow when they normally wouldn't do. And that just results in uncontrolled tumor growth. So tocerinib has demonstrated good efficacy, both as a sole agent and as part of a combination chemotherapy in the treatment of mast cell tumors in several clinical studies. So let's have a look at some of these. Firstly, in a randomized clinical trial of 145 dogs with recurrent mast cell disease following surgical excision, the overall response rate was around 42.8%, with complete remission observed in about 14.5% of patients. In another trial of 41 dogs with non-resectable mast cell tumors treated with lomustine, which is CCNU, and tocerinib, those dogs had an overall response rate of about 46%. And yet another study, this time in cats, looked at a retrospective study of 50 cats with mast cell disease, and they demonstrated a clinical benefit in 80% of cases, including 86% of cases with cutaneous, 80% with visceral, and 76% with gastrointestinal mast cell disease. Now this compares with response rates to traditional chemotherapy with lomustine or CCNU, which are documented at about 42% in dogs and 50% in cats. So tocerinib is at least uh, equal, if not a little better, than existing treatment protocols with lomustine. Now, the question that was then asked, can tocerinib be used in other types of cancer? Since it was released, Several researchers have investigated just that point, um, using tocerinib either alone or in combination with other treatment modalities, such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy and surgery in a wide range of cancer types. So let's have a look at some of these. With regards to canine tumors, let's kick off with canine osteosarcoma. There have been two major studies looking at the use of tocerinib in canine osteosarcoma, and both of the studies demonstrated very little activity against this tumor over and above what we'd normally expect to see in patients with traditional uh, surgical, uh, surgical removal of the primary tumor and therapy with carboplatin for metastatic disease. The first study that was carried out involved a 126 dogs with osteosarcoma. They were managed with limb amputation and were initially treated with a four-dose schedule of carboplatin. And then uh, dogs were compared in a trial of post-carboplatin cyclophosphamide and peroxicam 
or carboplatin and peroxicam with the addition of tocerinib, and they found that median survival times were not significantly different between the groups. And another study of 22 dogs with pulmonary metastasis secondary to osteosarcoma, tocerinib was administered as an adjunct to limb amputation for control of primary disease, and they found there was no difference in disease-free interval or survival time noted under uh, noted with tocerinib treated patients over historic untreated controls. So the overall results of that clinical trial did not support the use of tocerinib as a single agent chemotherapy for canine metastatic osteosarcoma. What about hemangiosarcoma? Being a vascular tumor, the anti-angiogenic properties of tocerinib may be of some value. Well, in a prospective study of 43 dogs with hemangiosarcoma, dogs were initially administered doxorubicin for 10 weeks after surgery, and those without any evidence of metastasis at the time received tocerinib and were monitored alongside dogs who had metastatic disease until the time of death. And tocerinib treated dogs showed no improvement in median survival times or disease-free interval over untreated dogs. Move on to another tumor, a canine frontal sinus squamous cell carcinoma. There was a case series of three dogs that were published that looked at the use of tocerinib in combination with paroxicam versus paroxicam and carboplatin. All three dogs were treated with carboplatin and paroxicam. Uh, the first two dogs uh, achieved tumor remission, so they were excluded from the tocerinib trial. But the third dog had a protocol change from carboplatin and paroxicam to tocerinib tocerinib and peroxicam, what they found was there was actually significant tumor reduction in terms of tumor size in the latter dog, but the patient relapsed and uh, that resulted in euthanasia of the dog after 195 days. So this report suggests that tocerinib may be an effective alternative to carboplatin in this particular tumor type. There's a report in the literature on tocerinib use in insulinoma patients. Uh, there's a case report of a dog with advanced or stage 3 pancreatic insulinoma that was treated with tocerinib and prednisolone. And the patient had stable glycemic control and survival for over 24 months. Now historically these tumors are associated with a median survival time of only around six months. So there actually may be potential for the use of tocerinib in the management of these tumors if we can get some future studies with larger case numbers to avoid uh, these uh, n equals one bias that can sometimes happen. With transitional cell carcinomas, there was a prospective study aimed to determine whether addition of tocerinib to vinblastine treatment for these tumors was of any benefit. And they found that whilst the tumor size did reduce a little bit over the course of treatment, overall survival time and clinical course was not altered. Pheochromocytoma, uh, adrenal tumors, in a study of five dogs with adrenal tumors, pheochromocytoma uh, adrenal tumors, all five dogs in the study that received tocerinib as therapy experienced clinical improvement or stable disease, suggesting that tocerinib may be of benefit in the management of those patients. And lastly, for canine tumors, there's a study on a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. In fact, it was a case report of a 10-year-old female entire English Springer Spaniel dog with a stromal tumor of the cecum with widespread abdominal metastases. And this dog was treated with tocerinib and had complete response despite the absence of any of the kit mutation genes. Um, there was no clinical evidence of tumor occurrence nine months after diagnosis. So here in dogs, I think we've got a few cases here in which we may see some benefit. You know, certainly um, insulinoma might be one. Uh, Pheochromocytoma might be another, and gastrointestinal stromal tumor may be another as well. With feline tumors, there's not been quite as much study in cats, but feline oral squamous cell carcinoma, there was a retrospective study of 46 cats with squamous cell carcinoma uh, that compared the use of tocerinib to cats who received no treatment following diagnosis, either radiation or chemo. And the cats receiving tocerinib have a, had a longer survival time of 123 days versus 45 days for non-treated cats. And additionally, the current can, uh, concurrent use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications also seem to improve uh, survival times independent of whether or not patients had tocerinib as well. So this study may indicate that there's a role for tocerinib use in 
oral squamous cell carcinoma, at least in terms of palliative care. Feline injection site sarcomas, there was a study of 18 cats with unresectable injection site sarcomas and tocerinib resulted in no measurable positive impact on tumor size or patient disease. So how do we wrap up this? Well, to date, mast cell neoplasia, particularly those with the KIT gene mutations, appear to be the most sensitive tumors to tocerinib administration, but there's a large body of work still to be carried out to sort of, I guess, fine tune our knowledge and expand our knowledge on whether or not tocerinib may be of significant use in the management of some other tumor types. As much of the work, even the positive results that have been seen in trials to date, has been carried out with pretty small numbers of patients, which invariably results in data associated with a little bit less certainty. So it's very much a case of watch this space. I think it's a really interesting drug one with a bit of potential for further study and some potential for some soft tissue tumor types that uh, fall outside the mast cell neoplasia claim there on the label. We're in the middle right now of preparing for our Essentials of Oncology and Small Animal Practice course for veterinary nurses and technicians. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more about oncology in dogs and cats, Check out our webpage, veteducation.com.au. Click on the Vet Nurse, Vet Technician page and uh, click on the Oncology course and there's a listing of the week-by-week -week breakdown. If you've got any questions, please feel free just to email us at info at Thank you so much again for joining us today and we hope to see you again very, very soon. Cheers.